Thank you. And I have to figure out how I'm going to spotlight you. That's okay. Um, I should just come up anyway. Um, okay, everybody. So thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so you, your schools are all very far progressed um, in your green schools journey if you're on the Global Citizenship Marine Environment team. So thank you very much um, for your commitment to the program. It's great. So... First off, um, yeah, as I said, so this is the eighth team on the Green Schools program. So it really is a long way through. And the idea is that we're revisiting the theme of water, but looking at it from a global um, perspective. Um, so there's nothing kind of more uniting than the ocean, I suppose. Um, so why do we do the marine environment as a theme? Um, well, oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface and they're absolutely essential to us um, in terms of food production, oxygen production, um, natural resources that we get from the ocean, the, the benefits that they give us in terms of well-being, but also in terms of jobs. And I'm going to go through those all now. So the oceans produce over half of the oxygen that we breathe. A lot of people think that um, the oxygen in the atmosphere comes from um, like the Amazon rainforest and our land plants and, and big forests around the world. But actually the oceans produce somewhere between 60 and 80% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. So that's coming from seaweeds and algae. They also play a massive role in regulating our climate. So Ireland's climate is very much affected by the ocean um, being an island. Um, so the North Atlantic drift keeps our waters kind of relatively warm in comparison to to where we are um in terms of latitude so if you look over at eastern canada they would get a lot of icebergs over there um a lot colder conditions whereas in ireland with a nice kind of moderate temperate climate um so we're severely impacted and affected by our our place within the north atlantic um, the oceans also act as a carbon sink, so they take approximately 25% of the excess carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and they soak up approximately 90% of the excess heat as well. So if we didn't have the ocean, we'd really feel the effects of climate change much more severely. So our oceans are also very rich in um, biodiversity. So around Ireland, we have about 25 species of whale and dolphin about 40 species of sharks. Um, we're a globally important um, country for seabird colonies. Um, and we really rely on this marine biodiversity as well. Um, so it's very important that we protect it. And we also need the ocean for lots of other things. So for example, food production. So 3 billion people around the world rely on seafood as a major source of protein in their diet. We get a huge amount of um, raw um, natural materials from the ocean that we need for medicines, for example. So, um, for example, sponges, sea sponges and sea cucumbers um, produce um, chemicals that are used in, for example, pain relief and cancer treatments um, and a huge amount of different types of drugs. Um, we also rely on the ocean for jobs and tourism. Um, for travel and for transporting goods. So 90% of Ireland's um, Ireland's goods that um, and international trade is shipped by, um, is, excuse me, is uh, transported by ship. Um, we also rely on the ocean for sport and recreation. So, um, so many different types of sport that we can enjoy in the ocean, like swimming, surfing, um, kayaking, and then for well-being as well. Um, so it's very, it's been shown to um, be very important for people's well-being and to improve your mood if you spend time near the ocean, whether that's going for a walk or going sea swimming. So our ocean brings us countless benefits, but we also need to protect it as well. Um, so kind of the main focus of the marine environment theme is looking at marine litter. Um, and that's just one of the threats affecting the ocean, but it's one that's very kind of visible and tangible and easy for um, for children and young people to understand and actually do something about and see themselves making a difference in. So that's why we kind of focus on primarily um, as part of this theme. 
but you are invited to do projects into other issues affecting the ocean as well. So you could have a look at um, different types of pollution, for example, one that um, people might not be aware of is noise pollution in the ocean, um, which really affects whales and dolphins and the way that they communicate and survive. Um, climate change has huge effects on the ocean. Um, I'm sure we're all very familiar with the idea of the melting ice caps, but then there's other things as well. So for example, coral reef bleaching. Um, so coral reefs, um, are basically becoming in endangered because of rising um, water temperatures. Um, there's also ocean acidification, which affects shelled animals. Um, so any things like lobsters and crabs, um, as the oceans are soaking in that extra carbon out of the atmosphere, it's much more difficult um, for these animals to, to grow and develop properly. Um, overfishing as well. So this is taking too much um, out of the ocean before fish can replenish their stocks. So we've got very effective super trawler boats these days, which can take huge volumes of fish um, out of the sea in one go. Um, and that just has a real knock-on effect um, in for the whole ocean ecosystem then. And then invasive species. So these are um, plants and animals that might be moved from one habitat or one part of the ocean to another um, accidentally and they can cause real problems um, when they're moved to a new habitat. So I'm sure we've got quite a few schools here this evening that um, are inland schools or that aren't particularly close to the sea. Um, I just kind of want to highlight and, and stress again that um, we all rely on the ocean and we can all impact the ocean. So while it might not feel like this theme is directly relevant to you um, it definitely is and we can all you know we can work on trying to to show that relevance as well um, so for example as I mentioned earlier you know the oxygen that we're breathing has been produced by the ocean our climate is regulated by the ocean and um, you're probably eating food or using products and um, that contain ingredients that come from the sea um, and also then if you're um, if you were to litter to inland or any part of the country, it really doesn't matter. That has a high chance of ending up in a river or um, getting washed into a drain and then making its way down to the ocean. Um, and even if it doesn't make it the whole way down, it's still impacting wildlife along the way. Um, also, your carbon footprint, as I mentioned, the oceans are um, very much affected by climate change. So if we can help to reduce our carbon footprint, that's helping the ocean as well. Um, but we do have a specific um, resource for inland schools. It's called When the River Meets the Sea. Um, and it's a presentation um, kind of loosely aimed at, at middle classes in primary school. Um, and it just goes through all the ways that we need the ocean and how we can impact the ocean. Um, so I definitely recommend that you um, have a look at that. Um, and then we've got some activity sheets on our website as well and um, that go along with that. And we will be sending on the slides um, either tomorrow or next week. Um, and we'll include the, the links to those resources as well. So marine litter is a massive problem. Um, 80% of marine litter originates on land. And when we have a look at kind of the coastline or look at beaches, we're really only kind of seeing the tip of the iceberg. So um, only about 15% um, of the marine litter in the marine environment is visible on beaches and on coasts. About another 15% is floating in the water column. And um, at least 70% is um, found on the seabed. So we're really kind of not seeing the full scale of um, the marine litter problem, unfortunately. Um, sorry, just want to go back there. Um, yeah, and just also to say that when you're um, kind of delivering this material to the students, marine litter can be a very overwhelming problem once you start doing projects on it and start doing research into it, um, you know, Plastic can be very difficult to remove from the ocean and it can have very long-winded impacts um, on the ocean and marine ecosystems. So 
I suppose, depending on the age of the students that you're teaching, it's really important to try and um, inform them, but also to, to not get too bogged down in the statistics, which is what I've tried to do here. Um, because if you get into the nitty gritty of it, it can be very overwhelming. Um, so it's much more useful I think if you can help the students to feel empowered that they are doing something about the problem um, by doing your small litter cleanups by trying to reduce the amount of single use plastics that you use in school um, by maybe doing some upcycling art activities and showing how you can reuse things um, yeah so I just kind of want to make that point that it's really important to kind of you know try and and put a positive spin on it and show them the things that they can do about the problem rather than focusing on just, you know, the scale of it. Um, so I'm just going to go through the seven steps then. Um, I'm sure you're all quite familiar with these, but if there's any new coordinators um, listening tonight, you might not um, know them in detail. And just to say that we, we are sending out um, our new Global Citizenship Marine Environment Handbooks um, so we've just gotten these designed um, we're just waiting for the finishing touches to be done to them and then we will be sending them out hopefully in the next few days um, or sometime next week. Um, and they're designed so that if you need to print it off, it won't use um, a lot of ink and it goes through the whole um, seven steps of the marine environment theme. So it's a really useful resource. Um, so like I said, we don't have that ready quite yet, but we should have it in the next few days for you. So step one is to set up your Green Schools Committee. So these are the students that are going to be um, kind of spearheading the programme within the school and they're led by yourself, the Green Schools Coordinator. So it's great if you can have representatives from as many different classes um, and age groups as possible um, within, within the committee. Um, just to make sure that there's full school representation. And you might want to maybe put in place like a buddy system if you've got maybe six class students um, and infants as well. Um, if you're a secondary school teacher, it's great to give the students as much ownership as you can over the, um, over the program so that they're kind of the ones that are really driving it, you know, with guidance from yourself. Um, but it kind of makes them buy in more I suppose if they have ownership of it you might also have um some non-teaching staff like you might have the caretaker or you might have the principal um involved as well um and your committee should meet regularly it's up to yourselves how often that is it depends on you know on your school situation um and your committee should keep um should keep records, should keep meeting minutes, um, which you will need to submit with your flag application. You also might like to designate different roles on your committee. Um, so for example, you could have, you know, in primary school, you could have the litter wardens who are maybe responsible for um, maintaining the litter and waste flag uh, or the energy savers or the water wardens. Um, or you can have them kind of doing different jobs, like you might have the minute keeper, or the secretary or the chairperson. So it's very much up to yourselves. Step two is your environmental review. So this is the main body of work that you need to do um, at the beginning of the theme to kind of figure out how much you already know about the marine environment. Um, so there's three essential actions as part of the environmental review. The first one is the Marine Litter Awareness Survey. So this is just a short questionnaire that we ask you to fill out in your first year working on the team um, and in your second year working on the team as well. So in the first year, you should try and do it as early as possible in the school year um, before you've really kind of taught any lessons about the marine environment. And you want um, to get as many um, students as possible in the school to complete this survey. And then you just work out the percentages, um, as you can see here. So the first question, for example, what percentage of students in the school have ever heard about litter in the ocean? Um, can list three ways litter might end up in the sea. Can list three reasons why it's bad to have litter in the sea. Can list three ways we can stop litter from ending up in the sea. Can list three ways um, that climate change affects the ocean and can explain what marine means. Um, 
if you're in your second year working on the marine theme, you might notice that these questions are phrased slightly differently to the ones that you um, would have completed last year. Um, this was just that there was a lot of feedback saying that some of the terminology was a bit difficult, particularly for younger primary school kids. Um, so we've just tried to simplify the language a little bit this year. But if you're in your second year and you've already done your year one of the survey, you can do the exact same survey again for year two um, and submit that with your application. Um, but if you're just in your first year or you're just completing the survey now, then these are the list of questions um, that you should be asking and they'll be in your handbook. Um, um, bum, 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 bum. The second um, essential action is to investigate sources of marine litter um, and to try and take action to um, reduce marine litter within your school. So you might investigate just kind of land-based litter. So that's just from people littering or maybe from or waste management from overflowing bins, things like that. You could have a look at microplastics. So these are tiny plastics that are kind of very barely visible to the naked eye, and they might occur. Um, they might be designed, for example, to be in cosmetics like toothpastes or body scrubs or face washes. And um, they are being phased out now, so hopefully we won't see too much more of them. But they do still show up um, as well, like. Glitter, for example, is a microplastic. Um, so that might be one that maybe you could kind of scale back in school in your art classes and think of some kind of alternatives to using that. Um, because once these microplastics get washed down the drain or in the sink and end up in the ocean, they're like incredibly difficult to remove again. Um, and they also end up in the food chain and eventually comes back to, to us and can cause a lot of health problems for humans. Um, other plastics might be balloons. So if you can avoid balloon releases um, in your school, because balloons, once they get up high enough, they explode um, and then they come back down to either the land or the sea in tiny fragments. Um, and then you could do investigations into other things. So, for example, cargo spills. Um, so big shipping containers sometimes fall off ships. Um, there was a famous one in the 90s of a shipping container full of rubber ducks that went overboard and the rubber ducks ended up in all different parts of the world um, because they were being drifted along on the different ocean currents. Um, so those are just some of the sources of marine litter. Um, and if you could try and take an action to try and reduce those. So as I said, maybe thinking about phasing out glitter, maybe trying to introduce maybe a school reusable bottle. Um, those kind of things, then that would be a brilliant action to take. Another one actually for primary schools is um, using those kind of twistable crayons that are uh, encased in plastic. If you could maybe swap them for more traditional crayons that are just like in a little bit of paper, that would be one way that you could cut down on your, um, your plastics. And then the um, third essential action is to carry out a cleanup. Um, so <clears throat> A very quick and easy way to do this is to do a two minute beach clean or two minute street clean. So this is where you literally spend two minutes um, cleaning up your local beach, park, river or street. Um, you take photo of the rubbish that you collect and then upload that onto social media with the hashtag, hashtag two minute beach clean or hashtag two minute street clean. And the idea is that you show um, how much of a difference you can make in a very short amount of time. Um, so you're doing little cleanup and you're raising awareness. Um, so again, as many people that you can get involved as possible for your cleanup. If you want to do a larger cleanup, that's absolutely perfect. Um, so those are the three essential actions for your environmental review. Um, step three then is your action plan. So this might be promoting an action to reduce marine litter, as I mentioned there. Um, for example, trying to introduce reusable bottles, organizing regular cleanups, creating awareness of microplastics, or it might be um, increasing awareness levels. So you can do that by updating your green schools notice board. Um, you might carry out more surveys. So in addition to, our, to the marine litter awareness survey, you might do a survey of um, maybe kind of what plastics are being used um, in the classroom or in our lunch boxes. 
Um, you might do a project about different marine species um, or different marine topics like maybe overfishing or maybe climate change in the ocean. Or you could do a project on your local river or lake if you're not near the sea. Um, so just to kind of try and raise awareness within the school and the wider community. So any actions that you take um, throughout your work on the marine environment theme should be recorded on your action plan. So your action plan should be a table like this, um, and we have a template for it. Um, so you're going to have four columns. First one is the action. So it might be carry out the marine litter awareness survey. Person responsible, so that might be the Green School's coordinator. Um, target date, so that's when you're going to get it done. And then your progress that you've made on that. Um, so it's really important that you record all of your actions on your action plan. Um, and this should be across the two years that you're working on the team. You should have a copy of your action plan um, up on your notice board so that the whole school is aware of what kind of work you're doing on the team. And um, when you're applying for the flag, the um, environmental awareness officer who comes to do your renewal visit will probably want to have a look at your action plan and you'll need to upload a copy of it with your application form as well. Step four is monitoring and evaluation. So this is um, basically trying to see what progress you're making on the team. Um, so the first thing that you should really do um, is repeat the marine litter awareness survey in your second year working on the team. So this is to see have people actually learned um, after the work that you've been carrying out um, on the team. And then you can look at kind of practical improvements. So if you can make any kind of quantifiable um changes, then that would be great. Um, so for example, you know, if you did a survey of how many people bring a single use plastic bottle to school versus a reusable plastic bottle, that might be something you could do. Or, you know, how regularly do we carry out cleanups now, um, now that we've started working on, on this team. And make sure to celebrate um, your successes and, you know, really um, make sure that everyone is kind of rewarded for the work that they've done. The next step is your curriculum work. Um, so this is just linking the marine environment theme to the curriculum. So that might be um, through science class. Um, you could do experiments to do with the ocean. Um, you could have a look at materials like plastics. Um, through art, you might have your own uh, marine theme mascot, like a fish or whatever you want yourself. Um, we have different competitions. We have a poster competition that you could enter. Um, geography, you could look at the water cycle and climate change, um, languages, you know, maybe um, poems to do with the sea. It's really any way that um, you can link in um, your curriculum work with the marine theme. So we have a template um, for recording that as well. Um, and you can just maybe even stick that up on the notice board in the staff room and ask the other teachers to just fill in when they have um when they've done a relevant topic in class on that piece of paper. So, you know, you might be saying like third class did um, upcycling plastic artwork um, and uh, as part of the marine theme. So that, um, yeah, so that you just have a record of that and you'll need to upload that um, with your application form as well. You don't need to upload um, like a load of photographs of everything you've done or, or photocopies of, marine essays or anything like that. You just need to share um, the, the template and the list with us. Sorry, Quiva, there's just a 15 minute time call. 15. Oh, okay, thanks, Friedrika. Um, so step six is informing and involving. So that's trying to get um, the whole school and wider community as involved as you can. It's really important that you have your Green Schools notice board and that you keep that up to date. Other things that you might do would be, um, you know, Make announcements over the intercom if you're running any um, marine events. Um, you could um, put any news in your school newsletter um, and you're going to have a day of action as well. So this is one day where the whole school gets involved um, trying to celebrate the theme that you're working on and raise awareness. So maybe you might have a guest speaker in if any of the parents maybe work in a marine related job. If you're near the beach, maybe you could visit the beach. If you're not, maybe you could visit your local lake or river. Um, you could do a big community cleanup. You could do art. You could screen a documentary. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do for your action day. 
And then step seven is your green code. So this is um, like a slogan or motto to do with the marine theme that you come up with. Um, so it can be kind of your your mission statement, I suppose, but it doesn't have to be a big, long um, a big long piece of material. It can just be like a one liner um, and it can be uh, maybe voted on by the students or they could come up with it together. It's very much up to yourselves, but it should be specific to the marine theme. And this, the students in the school should all know it and it should be displayed on the notice board. Um, so, yeah, so just to recap, you have your committee, then you carry out your environmental review with those three essential actions of a cleanup, um, investigating sources of marine litter and doing your litter awareness survey. You need to keep track of what you're doing on your action plan. Um, you need to repeat the marine litter awareness survey as part of your monitoring. Um, you need to link to the curriculum. Um, hold an action day and come up with a green code. And you don't necessarily need to do them all in that order. The, the main things that you need to do in order are setting up your committee and doing your environmental review. And then after that, everything kind of feeds into each other. So, you know, you might um, do um, an art project, which links to the curriculum and is also informing and involving and is also going to go on your action plan. Um, so they're not necessarily all separate steps. So I'm just going to very quickly go through some of the different opportunities that we have. I know we only have 10 minutes before we go back to the to the main room. So apologies if I'm speaking a bit fast. Um, for primary schools, we have regional workshops coming up in November. Um, so the workshops will basically include a presentation all about the marine environment. And then we'll have lots of fun art activities and kind of raising awareness about where marine litter comes from and ways that we can reduce it. So schools are invited to apply for um, five spaces um, for per school. So that includes a teacher. So it's usually a car load, basically a teacher and four students or two teachers and three students um, to attend one of those workshops. So we have them coming up in Castle Bar, Cork City, Stillorgan, Talla, Skibbereen, Kilkenny, Letterkenny and Oranmore. Um, so they're filling up fast, so make sure to um, to apply for your spaces now. Um, lunch is provided and there's also a travel subsidy um, to go towards your transport costs as well. Excuse me. Um, so we also have Life Below Water workshops. So if you don't, if you're not able to make it to one of those um, in-person workshops, we do have a resource which is a pre-recorded workshop that you can kind of run the workshop yourself um, in your class. Um, so we would have sent the link to this around in those um, those emails that you got at the start of the year, um, but we'll share that again. So it's basically um, pre-recorded um, presentations looking at four different marine topics, and then there's activities that you can run alongside them. So it's loosely based or aimed at around kind of third, fourth class. So that's freely available to you as well if you're not able to make an in-person workshop. So we have our Marine Spatial um, Planning Poster Competition, which has just launched, um, and you should have gotten information in the post about that um, in the last couple of days. Um, so this is open to primary and secondary school students and the theme is you, me and our future seas and the deadline is 22nd of November. Um, the entries have to be posted into us and we need to receive them by the 22nd of November um, and the posters have to be A3 in size. So I encourage you to, um, to get entries in for that. The Sea Keepers project is an optional um, extra module that you can sign up for as part of the marine theme which focuses on learning about um, Ireland's sea life. So it provides resources on six different marine plants and animals that can be found around Ireland's coast. Um, we are going to be opening the registrations for that in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you check our website, um, there'll be information coming soon about that. Um, so to register for it, you just need to get 10 students from the participating class to take um, a survey and then send those results back into us. But all the information will be available um, on our website in the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's mainly um, geared towards third and fourth class, the resources, but we also have um, another version for first and second class students as well, or for slightly younger students. 
Um, so you're very welcome to, um, to apply for the Sea Keepers project. We have our National Marine Creative Writing Competition, um, which will be launching in the new year. Um, so that's a really nice competition um, for any students who want to submit um, a poem or a short story up to 500 words. It's open to primary and secondary school students and there's lovely prizes for that as well. Marine Week is our annual celebration of the ocean and that's gonna run from the 31st of March to the 4th of April this year. Um, so if you want to mark that in your diaries now, um, so we'll have online webinars and we'll have um, lots of brand new resources um, all about different marine animals. We'll have drawing tutorials, how to draw the different animals um, and just lots of nice things on throughout the week. And there'll be lots of prizes to give away as well. Um, so I recommend um, putting that in your diary now. And then we're also going to be running our Marine Environment Conference. Um, that's going to fall during Marine Week. We're hoping um, it's going to be on the 3rd um, of March. And we'll have more information about that coming soon. So we move it around every year. So we haven't um, fixed the, the location for it yet, but we will be making an announcement about that fairly soon. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to come along. Um, we do lots of activities with the students for the day. We'll have... Um, about 150, 200 students taking part um, and you get to carry, you get to bring your own um, project that you've been working on and display that um, and all the different schools get to go around and have a look at their different marine projects. So that's a really nice day as well. Um, for any schools who are in their second year and are applying for the flag this year, um, you're going to be automatically entered into a competition for Marine School of the Year. So we'll be judging all the applications and picking out the ones that really stand out um, for outstanding work on the team. Um, and um, we've got some lovely prizes and you'll be invited to a special award ceremony if you win Marine School of the Year. So we'll have four regional winners for primary schools and four regional winners for secondary schools. And then at our award ceremony, we'll announce the national winners as well. Very quickly, I'm just going to mention a couple of secondary school initiatives. I think we might have one or two uh, secondary school teachers here. Um, you should have received uh, an email earlier this week with all the information about our secondary school initiatives if you're a secondary school teacher. Um, so we have our Marine Ambassador Program. So this is where we select one um, secondary school working on the Marine team to kind of act as leaders in the team um, for the year. You get lots of nice free things, you get training from us, um, hoodies, a field trip, um, and the opportunity to speak at our events and contribute to our newsletter. Applications are open for that. They're closing tomorrow, but we won't really be closing off the forum until Monday. So there's still um, a little chance to get in your application if you would like to be the Marine Ambassador School this year. And then I would also say any secondary schools um, on the East Coast um, or in Leinster um, to um, check out our Bull Island Beach Exploration Workshop, which we're going to be running on the 22nd of October um, in Bull Island in County Dublin. Um, we're going to have lots of different fun activities. Um, so we're going to be doing a clean up and also a bit of bird watching, wildlife photography, seashore ecology. Um, so there's limited spaces remaining for that and your travel costs will be subsidised as well. Um, so I'd really um, encourage any secondary schools who can to apply for spaces at that. Our Marine Film Club um, will have more information coming soon. So this is um, where we'll screen documentary and have um, a special guest come and speak about um, the topics raised in the documentary to kind of encourage discussion um, among secondary school groups. We'll be running online and in-person events. We also have a photography competition as part of um, our Marine Spatial Planning competition and the photography element is just open to secondary school students. Um, so you should have gotten information in the post about that as well. Um, and then Joanne mentioned the Young Reporters for the Environment competition and the Let's Fix Fashion campaign as well. So we'd really encourage any secondary schools to take part in those. Then if you're applying for your green flag this year, um, you have to be in your second academic year working on the theme to apply for the flag. And um, there's kind of two parts to the process. First off, you organize a renewal visit from your local environmental awareness officer. And um, so I would contact them sooner rather than later to organize that. 
and they might come out to your school you know you could maybe organize it for january or february so that you'll have gotten a good bit of work done this year and um, the visit has to happen before you submit your application form and then you need to submit the online application form through our website if you go to greenschoolsireland.org forward slash apply and the deadline for the applications is friday 28th of march um, I know that we're going to be brought back into the main room now in two minutes, um, but we will have time um, for questions in the main room. So if anybody has any questions, you'll be able to ask me then. Um, and just to say, we've got loads of resources on our website. Um, and here are a couple of extra um, websites that are quite useful and might be quite interesting to you as well. But all of this information will be sent around to you in the slides. Um, and mywaste.ie is a great resource for figuring out where any of your waste is meant to go. If you've got any questions throughout the year, you can contact us at marine at greenschoolsireland.org. So that's myself and Chloe and Friedrike, and we are the marine um, team. So thank you very much. Sorry I had to absolutely fly through that. There's a lot to get through in not much time, but um, I'm going to be staying on. We'll be gone back into the main room, but if you've got any questions, um, you can ask them then. So let's see, I'll stop sharing my screen now. And um, Friedrich, if you want to stop the recording, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Let's stop mm -hmm. now. Oh. Yeah, we've got 58 seconds to go. <laughs> <laughs>